Hey everyone, my name is Justin, and I think I've finally done it. I have found the best camera for streamers out there. And I'm not just saying the best webcam. I think the Insta360 Link might be even better and more useful for the average streamer than very expensive mirrorless cameras like the one I'm filming on that you can spend two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 on. This thing is awesome. And we're gonna talk about why I think it's the best all around package. First off, just a few of the tech specs. It is a 4K webcam. It's got noise canceling microphones. What sets it apart from cheaper webcams is it has a larger half inch sensor. The larger the sensor is, the more light it lets in, the better it does in lower light. A little bit blurrier the background. It's also got a great F1.8 lens, which just means it's wide open. Again, lets a lot of light in. But the magic is really in two things with this camera. That is the motorized gimbal that can track you, move around, and do all sorts of cool things that a regular camera just can't, as well as the software and the AI tracking that is in it that works right in tandem with that motorized gimbal. It makes it a very special and compelling package. I think it's probably easier if I show you what I'm talking about, so why don't we just flip around, hop in the software, and I'll show you what makes this camera so special. Let's check it out. All right, here we are. Insta360 is on. I will say I'm not doing anything too crazy with the lighting at the moment. I've got two like these little LED panel lights, like you can get the Elgato Air lights or something. There's cheaper LED ones. I'll throw some in the description if you're looking. Lighting is the biggest thing that makes a difference with the camera. So if you don't have good lighting, don't expect to have a good picture. It doesn't matter how expensive your camera is. It's all about lighting. Again, this isn't this isn't a crazy set up two, two little panel lights. You could use lamps. You could use some other things. But let's talk a little bit about the piece that makes this camera so special. And it's the fact that it is a motorized gimbal, meaning it moves and you can move it in the software. Oh, yeah, we've got a joystick. Does this work? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does. And you can move it around and then kind of try and frame it up exactly how you want to have it here, as well as the ability to zoom. And this is why having 4K is important. Most people are not streaming in 4K, but what's nice about 4K is you're able to zoom in here digitally and not lose quality because you're probably displaying in 1080p, but you got 4K. So you got a lot of extra pixels to play with. So just overall, the quality on this is quite nice. And again, it's not that you spend a ton of time in general, I would say, in a full screen large shot like this. We'll show that in a bit. It's probably more a little bit smaller, but you want to start with something that looks quite good. But the the thing that makes this camera special is the AI and the tracking. So I'm going to skip over. We'll come back to image settings, but um, I'm a hand talker. So um, you have gesture controls to be able to control things. I'll turn this back on. And when you hold your palm up, the light flickers. And now this thing is going to track me. Wherever I go, look at it. It's tracking me around the room, and it's keeping me in focus and in frame. And why this is important, I would say, is more so for, if we were to go over, we're in OBS here, and this thing, you'll see it continues to track me. And maybe for a bigger shot, that's somewhat good, can be depending. Maybe you wanna go reach back and show something off that you've got on your desk back here. Obviously, you need to keep the microphone close, but if you do that, you could go, hey, here's my Hex Gaming controller. Also, this controller rules, but that's a different, different topic. Being able to do that, it moves around. The bigger, reason is when you flip into this mode where you're showing off your gaming you're playing there are other streamers i'll turn off the tracking with my little palm who they end up doing this right we've all seen this i'm looking at you swag and you're playing and maybe all you see is forehead or you see a little bit of eyes or something like this here watch the difference of turn the tracking back on what happens if i try and do that here too look at I'm in frame, at least. Again, this may not be the best setting, but maybe you're just wanting to chill out and come back here and play back here or move around. When you've only got a little box to work with like this, having this tracking is like having a producer, a camera person in, always keeping you connected with your audience. And that is really special. That's what makes this camera worth the money. Quality is good, but right here, you can have the best quality camera, but if this is what you're doing, the quality of the camera isn't all that helpful now, is it? Would you rather have a great image showing off 
Justin's receding hairline right here? Or would you rather have an image that at least if I'm trying to do that, you can see my face and see what I'm up to? I, I know what I'm picking, you know, at the end of the day. And again, the quality on this is is still it's it's really nice it's a 4k camera it's got the bigger sensor get your lighting dialed in it looks really really nice right now so that is what makes this special you've got the auto tracking you've got the zoom you can turn the auto tracking off or on um, if you had a couple of people in here you could just physically grab this turn it towards the other person it would start tracking them as well if you're a hand talker like me uh, you know, there'd be times where I'm talking and it'll automatically turn the zoom off or on and I, or sorry, the auto tracking, I don't want that. So I'm going to turn that setting off and I have this single tap tracking where I can literally just tap the camera. Now it's tracking and I can just tap it very lightly. Now the tracking's off. So that's a, that's a pretty, pretty great feature. Let's turn it on and see what happens. See if we enjoy this or not. Um, AI zoom. So you've got a couple of different modes here. This one's kind of tracking me head. Um, I can do a half body one. So it's going to zoom out a little and it's going to keep more of my torso in. That could be important for certain streamers, other streamers, as well as if you want to back up and do like a whole body. This won't work. I'm not far enough back, but you want to use a second one or have this be a full screen thing where you're writing on a board. It'll follow whole body, half body or head, depending however fits for your type of streaming. It's able to do that. Anti-flickers, just depending on your lighting, there may be times where you want to turn flickering off and on. And what I like is the autofocus on this works really, really well. I've never found myself to be out of focus. You can do manual focus if you want and try and dial it in and just like lock it off perfectly, but then you can't move and that's not really, that kind of defeats the purpose. Stream mode, you've got a couple of options here. You can do like a nine by 16, like a vertical streaming or have 50 or 60 frames per second turned on in software like OBS to match your frame rate of your video games. HDR, uh, if I turn this off, it's gonna override my other settings. That's fine, we'll go back and fix it and show it. HDR, high dynamic resolution. Typically it brings the shadows up and tries to keep your face in focus. Gives you dynamic range is just the amount of shades basically between the dark areas and the bright areas. So we can turn that off, but then we don't get 4K and we don't get 50 or 60 frames per second. But I would say this is more of an automatic mode and it's just gonna depend on your lighting and how you're set up. HDR can struggle when you have relatively good lighting in situations like that. So I'm gonna turn that off and we're gonna go back to our image settings. I'm gonna show you how we can dial in the image settings. So. Let's just go through the settings. This will be helpful and show you how much control we have over the camera. ISO is basically how bright or dark the image is natively on the, the sensor. So are we turning the sensor up way too bright? It just lets us dial in kind of the, the base setting. We're going to go right there. Shutter speed, I you, you probably don't want to mess around with this too much, I would say. If you're playing 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second, put it on 1 60th. I'm just going to bump that up maybe a little bit. This exposure curve is cool because what it allows you to do, this one is the highlights. So the brightest part of the image here, you can, you can kind of dial it up. You can see around my face, it starts to look like way overcooked, but you can just dial it back a little bit so it's smooth. Mid-range is kind of those, those again, the mid-middle bright areas. And then this is your, uh, let's take that back down a little bit. This is your shadows. So depending if you want to hide things in the dark or bring things up, what's nice is like just you get to, you get to play around this and just kind of dial this in to a spot where you feel like, yeah, that looks good. Which I'm going to, well, let's go around there. Temperature is basically how orange or warm your image is or how blue or cool your image is. And you're able to dial that in again, kind of matching up to your skin tones or your set or whatever you feel like you want to do there. I do wish in more camera software, they also have a pink and a green slider, the tint. You can see my face looks a little bit pink, part of my natural skin tone. But if I could pull that to green a little bit, it would smooth that out for me a little bit better. Let's turn off the tracking. It's kind of getting a bit annoying. Uh, brightness is just, I hope, hopefully straightforward. We figure out what brightness does. Contrast is the difference between the, the dark shadows and the bright face. So if I go all the way to the right, you're going to see my face gets really bright and the shadows get really dark. Oh, um, or you can dial it back a little bit to bring out what's going on in the shadows a bit more. Saturation. Woo! 
black and white, basically black and white, how much color you're adding to your image. And then sharpness is, well, watch my beard, sharp, take it off, it looks soft, almost out of focus, but um, depending on your skin and how you're feeling about it that day, turn this down if you wanna hide pores, turn it up if you wanna bring out beards and or pores. We're gonna leave that somewhere around the middle. Going back to what I said in the beginning though, it's the AI in this of tracking you that makes this so special. You've got tons of control over your image. You're able to dial it in so you're looking really good. I could fiddle with this a little bit more, get it good. We're just kind of literally doing a one take live demo of how this works, but it's the tracking, which I just turned on with my hand talking, where we can get over here and we can go bit, big game, a little Justin. We could dial in some kind of playing. And again, it's gonna track me wherever I go around the room. If I get close, if I get far, it's gonna make sure that I'm always in frame so that I can think about the game and not think about the technical aspects of my stream, which is where the magic is. That's why this camera is worth the money that it's worth is because it lets you spend less time focusing on the production and more time on connecting with your audience and gaming. And that's what makes it so special. So the big question though is if you're going to spend $350 on a camera like this, are you better off spending seven or $800 to get a mirrorless camera? One of the things I would say to that is what makes these cameras look good and even the situation right now is not so much the camera I'm shooting on, it's the lighting, it's, it's the, the set and I've got a nice big light here and I've got lights in the background to make it interesting. I believe you would be so much better off spending those extra few hundred dollars on getting a couple of lights and setting up your set well than you would just getting a nicer camera. Because I will tell you, this camera, which is a couple thousand dollars, without these lights looks terrible. The webcam with proper lights will look way better than it will. So I would say that's a big compelling piece. If you're on a budget, you don't have thousands of dollars to spend, spend some money on some lighting. But this camera will do really, really well with the good lights because of the control that you have it over it in the software. So it's a very, very special unit. I think I've got a discount code in the description below. If you're interested in this, you want to support the channel, buy it through the code. I appreciate that. You do whatever you want, but it's a very cool product. Thank you to Insta360 for sending this to me to try out. They're not paying me for this review. I think I get to keep this though. So there you go. A little bit of disclosure, but it'll be really fun to use to set up and to continue streaming and playing with. So I'm Justin. If you have any questions at all, as always, drop it in the comments below and I'd be super happy to answer them, chat with you. See you down there. Have a great day.